only go this far. I think we'll get started with the prelude. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is good to be together. So before I forget to introduce myself, I'm Vicar Lily Brellenthin from Faith Evangelical Lutheran Church. I always like to state the name of the church as well because we do post this online. And so if anyone stumbles upon this video, it's good to do so. Um, so shout out to this community of Walworth. Um, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, um, we will meditate on the words in the bulletin for the prelude, the church in the wildwood. Um, please refrain from singing, but a bit of uh, toe tapping and humming is always a appropriate. <laughs> Um, as we were pleasantly surprised by our turnout this morning, it looks like we did run out of bulletins. So if you are close to someone um, that you feel comfortable sharing with, um, I believe, <laughs> thank you. I think Penny still needs one if there's another one willing to share. Thank you so much. <laughs> As we begin, let us rise together and confess our sins in front of our community and our God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. 
Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm for today comes from Psalm 26, and we'll read this responsively. Give judgment for me, O God, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully, faithfully with you. I have not sat with the wordless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, 
and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? For what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This week, I was drawn to the first reading from Romans. One of my favorite verses ends that passage. What a week to get these words. When I feel I have had to hold my tongue in many ways. Maybe it's hard to believe, but I can get pretty heated. When I get heated, it's because I'm either very passionate about something or very passionate against something. I'm privileged to have a platform where I can speak, here and online. And people are listening, sometimes. <laughs> I'm privileged as a white woman and even privileged in the ability to hold my tongue, as silence can be a privilege. I renounce evil, white supremacy, and racism, and it's hard. But I will never know what it's like to be on the other side. Sometimes I need to get uncomfortable to spread the good. And sometimes I need to make a mess in effort to protect the lives of black and brown siblings, our neighbors. Jesus tells us in the gospel that if we want to be followers of Christ, we must deny ourselves and lift up our own crosses. That is a big call, and it seems a bit scary at times. This week started with joy as I celebrated my birthday. But later on that Sunday, the 23rd of August, Jacob Blake was shot in Kenosha. And the social justice mo movement has made its mark now in Wisconsin yet again. And later in the week, I heard of a precious building to my family that was burned down in uptown Kenosha. Then the week ended with the election of a new bishop in the South Central Synod of Wisconsin. Talk about a mixed bag. Why and how do these things keep happening? One of the bishop candidates yesterday says, the hard and bold questions, that is where the cross is, and that is where the tomb is, and that is where God brings new life. God is in the mess. God is with the police officers, with Jacob Blake and his family, with the protesters and with the families of the deceased. And we pray for all sides. We are called to humanize people. As we know, God invites everyone to the table. And throughout our frustrations, we are called to spread love. Love comes in many different ways. Sometimes it's tough love. Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. Jesus knew that his future needed to look a certain way. And that's what he had to do. He had to stop Peter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. I'm hoping that sounded a bit familiar as we recently read it in Romans. Paul knew the church in Rome could do better, and I knew our churches in Wisconsin can do better. As I grew up seeing women as pastors, I knew I had a chance. Seeing women elected as bishops, I knew that I could grow even more in this ministry that I feel called. When people of color continue to see their community die at the hands of white people, I take steps back and I see myself, and I am confronted with horror. This week we heard the news of Chadwick Boseman, an African-American man that starred in many films embracing and celebrating black lives. He's died of colon cancer. 
Young children of color especially can look up at the theater screens and say, that could be me. I can do that. I can see myself. His death was yet another hit to this community, our siblings in Christ. This all being said, we are created in God's image, and God sees God through, through and within each of us, no matter what we look like, and that is amazing. So how can we live this out? What if we started looking for God in others? How can we love like God loves and radically change the narrative and rebuild? Until then, I'll keep preaching and pushing for the good, the better, and the best of our ministry and what we are called to do. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This final verse in Romans 12, 21, I have referenced recently um, on my vicar on the go, and this is um, just the time that I happen to look at the clock quite often, 12, 21, and I recite that verse. I recited it so much in college that my friends started to do the same. <laughs> do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now I use it as a calm down phrase when I need to take a break from social media. <laughs> The world as we know it comes with the good and the bad, the lightness and the darkness. Life is indeed a beautiful mess. Nevertheless, if each day we strive for the good, I wonder if we will slowly see more of the good, as God's love is contagious. Amen. Let us meditate on the words of take our lives.
Let us continue to offer ourselves and our talents to this ministry. In a physical form, we have um, a basket behind um, the crew here that um, we will collect offering, but we will not bring it forward at this time just to keep as clean as we can. But the basket is in the back and let us pray together. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. With your grace, we are here today. Nourish us through these gifts that we place before you, our talents, our support for your church on earth and our hearts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. As we continue in this mindset of prayer, I'll read through the petitions, and as I say, Lord, in your mercy, you are welcome to respond with receive our prayer. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with you and with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those that we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding, that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and the most vulnerable in their communities. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick. Lord, in your mercy. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and to persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light. In our remembering, give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In a week and a year that we need all of this peace from God that we can get, we're going to share that with one another in a distant kind of fashion. <laughs> so the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. We now yet again meet at the table, the table where all are welcome.
the table that we can kind of defy time and space and we are all together here, all saints and sinners among us. The night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and poured it for those disciples to drink, saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And as the body of Christ, we are all welcome. We will take part in communion as we are back in our cars, kind of exiting the parking lot, follow the cars in front of you. And um, yeah, it's kind of worked out pretty great and it's great to connect with people. So we are still here and that is beautiful even during a pandemic. And in that and um, online and together outside with all of our voices and all the translations of the Lord's Prayer that we know, we'll pray together as one voice for God. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ. God the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. And as we start transitioning to communion, um, we'll go in that peace, but we'll also listen to Trading My Sorrows, one of my favorite songs. Thank you. 